Okay. So we are going to have a trade with Dallas. <gasps> Dallas achieved one of its goals here. Do you want me to say who the pick is at number 10? Or do you want me to wait? I want you to wait. Okay. So I will say what Dallas did. So Dallas has moved down to number 12 with Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City has moved up. In order to do so, according to Shams, they have taken on the Davis Bertans contract, uh, which is something that Dallas has wanted to do. Dallas has had two goals essentially throughout this process. Uh, from what I understand, they've wanted to add further depth in terms of younger guys on rookie scale contracts, because as you know, they have traded a lot of their depth over the last little while. And they have wanted to try and create further flexibility after next season in order to create uh, star level outcomes and a potential contender around Luka Doncic. So basically they're trying to get more flexible and they're trying to add further picks. And by trading Davis Bertans, they have achieved the flexibility piece of that. And frankly, I think not moved out of any sort of tier of talent here from 10 to 16, I think is very similar in terms of talent. Uh, the Bertons contract for Oklahoma city fans is $17 million in 2023, 24 and $16 million in 2024, 25. Not a deal that anybody's going to be particularly enthused about. He does have an early termination option. If he wants to exercise that in 2024, 25, I don't see that happening because Get he's not getting that much, that much more money moving forward. Uh, yeah. I, I think mm -hmm. that, the trade makes a lot of sense for Dallas yeah. because now really what I've wanted Dallas to do this whole time. I mentioned this to uh, a friend of mine that works for a front office. I've wanted Dallas to just piecemeal themselves down. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, get a team to take on a contract, you know, from Utah get for 12, get 16 and 28 and something else. Right. So basically you get for this 10th overall pick off the Burton deal, 16, 28, maybe something else from Utah, continue to do all of that stuff, right? What are you, what are you looking at? What do you got? For no, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to think of this from Oklahoma city's perspective, moving up to two slots. Yeah. Who, who do you think they took? This is a fun question. You know, right? I do know. Yeah. Okay. So I've had a couple different thoughts that pop into my head. The first is Derek Lively, a guy who could be that rim protecting center for them. The other is Grady Dick, jumping Orlando at 11, who probably needs a floor spacer. If that's who Dallas mm -hmm. thought that they wanted, that would make sense going up. Those are really the two guys. And now Silver's at the podium. So we're going to see who he ends up going with here. Like I, I think it was smart for Dallas to move out regardless. They needed more veteran guys. There's no instant impact for them. We knew this was going to be a spot. But let's see. Oh, he's announcing the Wizards Pacers trade. That's what he's doing. So I'll explain while that's happening. Derek Lively doesn't really fit what Oklahoma City wants to do organizationally. Uh, they love centers who can handle the ball and can like dribble, pass, and shoot. We think there's some latent upside with Lively as a passer, right? Like that's yeah. a real distinct outcome. Uh, but you can't dribble. It's Casey the Wallace? Yes, it's Case and Wallace. Uh, Oklahoma City likes guys who can play basketball. Yeah, I love it. That's the big key. Like they it. just like I guys who it. can play basketball. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, the thing that this does, by the way, in my opinion, long term, this sets Oklahoma City up for a star trade moving forward because their big contract on their books right now is Lou Dort, right? I'd imagine they will keep Lou Dort on their books moving forward for this year. But next year, if a star comes available, you can combine that Lou Dort contract with the Davis Bertans contract, which at that point will be expiring. You will be able to do a con do a deal for a player up to probably like 40 million at that point, because Dort and Bertans combined will make 32 and a half million. And that season is actually the last year where Oklahoma City is really going to be able to like 
go above and beyond in terms of trades before they get like crazy expensive with all the extensions they're going to have to hand out to their stars. And they're going to have a ready-made player in Case and Wallace to replace Lou Dort. I think it is fucking brilliant from Oklahoma City. I I just love Case and Wallace. I had a top 10 grade on him. I know he's a little bit smaller, and smaller guards don't tend to make it as far in the NBA. But my God, man, this is an unbelievable competitor, a great kid. This is the Kentucky effect that you're betting on on the offensive end of the floor. I keep saying the thing with Case in this year is he essentially filled two different roles on the offensive end for the Wildcats. He started the year as more of the off-ball guy, and if you know John Calipari's offense, he likes to keep him segregated. Two backcourt guys, one does most of the handling, the other runs off of a million baseline screens and is more of a shooter. He started the year in the shooter role. It was pretty good. 40% from three at that point in time, suffered a couple injuries and wasn't really the same athletically. I think it really tinkered with the base of his shot moving forward. But he transitioned to that on-ball role when Severe Wheeler got hurt and Kentucky realized that a Severe wheeler oscar Shibwe two-man tandem in the middle of the floor provides you none spacing. And Kaysen performed admirably kind of orchestrating the offense. He's got a little bit more juice with the ball in his hands than he gets credit for. Nice runner and floater in the mid-range area. Still a little square or boxy of an athlete, particularly in terms of creating his own shot. But he's got more than he gets credit for. Defensively, I keep describing him as a Patrick Beverly type of player. He's got that grit and tenacity to guard up the lineup if you need him to, even though he is a little bit undersized. And just an unbelievable competitor and, and team guy. He's more quiet and reserved in the way that he goes about it than a Patrick Beverly. But he knifes in from the weak side and has unbelievable reads, makes winning basketball plays as a help defender. I really like Cason Wallace as a basketball player. It's going to take me a little more time to think about the fit in Oklahoma City. But when you're a franchise like they are, who have so many good young players, just keep adding good young players. That's a positive mm -hmm. move from them. Case and Wallace is a really good young player. I got no problem with this. Well, in the way it fits is simple. It's you have Shea Gilgis Alexander and Josh Giddy, both of whom have improved defensively over their careers, but you don't want Shea having to deal with primary defensive assignments. And I actually don't think Josh can really deal with point of attack defensive assignments. So you go and you get a guy who is an elite level point of attack defender in case and Wallace that is going to fit with all of these guys elite. and make their life easier. Yep. He's elite. You, you, you do think he is elite, right? I do. I do. I have, I mean, if him and Anthony black are the two best perimeter defenders in this class, I think Kaysen is, grittier in some ways. I just like the size of Anthony, which is where I can make it. Ty goes to the bigger guy. It's essentially what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. 